These are on my table. Um, they are um, they are violets, and that I love violets. They're my favorite things. But my other flowers in the garden here, I couldn't tell you what they are, and I absolutely they're my favorite things in the whole world. But I can I can smell them now and see them, that they're pickly or whatever, but I can't tell you, oh, these are my favorite flower. What are they? They're not nasturtiums. I don't know what they are. <laughs> so this is her follow-up MRI from June of this year, 2013, and you can see right off the bat that there is volume loss and association in the visual area posteriorly in the occipital cortex and the occipital lobe as well as part of the temporal lobes. But the white matter signal changes have dramatically been reduced. And as you go up a little bit higher, you're getting mostly volume loss. There is some residual white matter signal change, but considerably better than where it was, and this is probably what's responsible for her persistent deficits with language and her ability to get certain words out, but markedly improved. And her visual occipital cortex area and the visual uh, dysfunction is markedly improved to the point where she can pick up pretty much most, if not 90% of her visual space where she couldn't see one thing in her visual space previously. And there's been no evidence of any new lesions showing up on the MRI scan from the MS. I love to sit outside and I have, uh, I do my ironing out on the deck and I uh, have my music on. But I don't have my music, um, just what is on the radio. If the uh, number changes for some reason, if the uh, power goes out or something, then I'm totally, I can't, can't do it, to can't get back to it. I was very hopeful that she would recover completely. And I was not willing to not have that happen. So I was very committed to making sure I could do whatever I could to help her regain function.